Hi, this is Michelle River from Erie River Publishing, and we are here today um, talking about our newest release. Uh, it's very exciting. It took a full year to put this thing together, so you know that the stories are top quality. Um, it is Monsters and Mayhem, and we are talking with um, four of our awesome authors. We have, did I lose someone? I think I lost someone. We have Tim Mendes, Radar, Jamie uh, Faulkner, and Ethan Sabetel. Oh my gosh, do you know what's ri ridiculous? I went through everyone's names, and of course I can't say it like when the camera is on. So I apologize. Um, and we should have Kevin as well, but I think I might have kicked him out of the stream or he decided uh, I'm too scary. Um, but Erie River Publishing um, is a small independent publishing house where we publish a lot of um, newer and upper, up, up and coming authors. We publish dark fiction, um, which is this one specifically is horror. And we uh, publish, uh, sorry, I'm like, what else do we publish? Um, <laughs> dark fantasy. Um, we have anthologies and single author uh, novels and novella releases. And um, it's just really exciting. Um, you can find us everywhere. We are on Facebook uh, under Erie River, which is where you might be watching us. We're also on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, if you want to um, feel all new and young. <laughs> Uh, we're on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, pretty much anywhere there. And we also have a patron uh, account as well if you want to support. That way we do monthly stories on that, as well as for authors, uh, there's little discounts and uh, early submissions. Um, but let's get to the fun, exciting part. We have Tim, uh, Raider, Jamie, and Ethan coming on. Um, and I'm going to introduce them one at a time. Let's go see Tim. We're going to go Tim first. Hello, Tim. Greetings. Hi. Yeah. So Hello you brought us, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I feel a little bit calmer than uh, last time. That's, yeah. I feel like every time I see you, I'm always like, Wah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always seem to catch you when you're in the middle of some kind of mayhem. Well, that seems to be your life at the minute. <laughs> I know. I'm like, that's kind of my life. Yeah. <laughs> that is just what it is. Um. So you've got one story in the, do you have one two. story or two? Yeah, you've got two stories in this yeah. one. What are the two themes? That uh, you yeah, the, fir uh, the first one I had through was for vampires. Uh, it's yeah. a story called The Suckling Pig. And the second one is, surprise, surprise, old gods. I know. Uh, <laughs> so weird that you would be writing that. I know, right? Um, <clears throat> and that one's called Eugene Angove Loses His Marbles. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no it was a it's a brilliant story so i'm 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 glad that you wrote them and that you you came in we've got yeah. a a couple of people saying hi oh shelby is here today so hi shelby and then uh hi josiah hello <laughs> um all right let's see another author we have radar next sorry i was supposed oh, to see your name okay. and then pop you up but oh. hey it's all uh, right gotta keep me on my toes this, we'll do this look look out so we all know what there we're gonna go. look like Boom. Okay, so uh, hi, this is the first time that I'm meeting you. Um, Same here. Not me meeting me, but me meeting you. Yeah. So that's what I meant. <laughs> I feel like that's normally how it goes. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Um, so uh, it's exciting to finally get to meet you. Where are you from? Uh, I'm, I'm from Wichita, Kansas. So like wow. probably one of the flattest places on earth really yeah so i think that's I'm, all i know about it that yeah you know most people go oh the wizard of oz and then that's, yeah. that's oh yeah about you know, it. i didn't even think about that <laughs> that's all, all right I, all i know about wichita kansas is the btk killer oh there so, you go there you go that's oh, really different. it's really, <laughs> it's really weird it's really weird because people around here are like yeah 
yeah, I remember old BTK, and it's like you yeah. shouldn't be proud of that, but no, no. <laughs> sure, you know. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> that's it that's um, you so know. what was you've got one in this one what was this uh what theme did you write for on this one right it was uh it was for ghouls so ghouls. a classic classic yes. call to say the least <laughs> so uh well i really enjoyed that one and i think a lot of people are gonna read it and i'm excited because we are gonna have a couple of people do readings today so uh it's gonna be cool to have everyone get a little snippet from you okay next one up is jamie jamie are you ready i am gonna ask this time instead of just throw people on okay <laughs> hi <laughs> now i'm being prepared i'm telling people hi jamie <laughs> where are you from uh so i'm from the uk but i i live in the czech republic Oh, okay. Ooh, wow. Nice. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I love traveling. So for me, living abroad, trying Czech beer, you know, it's, it's a good time. Yeah. Well, like if you can do it, you can do it. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Discover the world. That's what I say. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. It's so only fun. It's abroad, straight to the pub, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just get drunk somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so um, you wrote, what was your story? Uh, what was the theme of the story that you wrote today? Yes, yeah, so today, it but... was the October theme of Haunted Dolls, which oh, yes. is something I never thought I would write about but actually it was like a, it was really enjoyable actually <laughs> well it's like it's a um a lot of people have like an inherent fear of like a dolls that will come alive mm. in fact i still to this day terrify my sister with dolls like everyone so i've got two dolls in the basement that i bought specifically to terrorize her with and wow. we're like 40. <laughs> yeah my, my mother has got had this bloody proper victorian doll with the china face and it was yeah. in a display cabinet right on the top shelf in the living room and it, yeah it still freaks me out to this day i hate that damn and doll. yeah and that's, <laughs> that's the best thing about this collection is that we can like just pull at everyone's irrational fears of like dolls and ghouls it's just old gods although is that really irrational <laughs> no. I wouldn't say it was a fear either, more of an obsession for me. <laughs> yeah, well, for you, it's an obsession. All right, so we've got um, Ethan up next. I'm going to see if he's. Okay, well, he's just staring, so I'm going to see that's yeah. Oh, yes, he's not. <laughs> I apologize. Hi, Ethan. Hello. Um, uh, nice. Where are, you, uh, where are you hailing from today? Um, so uh, I'm originally from uh, Saratoga Springs, New York, but uh, currently I'm in uh, Nova Scotia in Canada. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. How's the weather? Um, let's see. <laughs> it's been a bit of a mixed bag today. It's uh, Currently it's sunny right now, but uh, earlier today it was like snowy and I guess uh, below like uh, minus five Celsius, I think. Oh, that's not too bad. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, we're at minus five right now in like snow. Right. <laughs> oh, geez. Ouch. I feel pretty lucky now hearing that. <laughs> you think you feel lucky or you want to see the snow? Because I Oh no, I feel pretty lucky. It's like 65 <laughs> here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Kevin is having a little bit of issues with his um internet right now. So he's gonna try to jump on later. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to hear a little bit from him. But for now, it's just gonna be the five of us. Okay. So um which works. It's great to see you guys. Great to it's see you. Good to see everybody. Um, so Ethan, what did you, what was the story you wrote and what took you to Nova Scotia of all the places in the world? Right. So, um, yeah, so um, the uh, story that I wrote for Monsters of Mayhem is uh, called Bullwetter, um, which is uh, themed for the, uh, uh, the Wendigo uh, stories and like that, like kind of takes place in like Nova Scotia as well. Like obviously like during the, you know, like Viking age, since it's about like Viking uh, Vikings in North America. But um, uh, what brought me to Nova Scotia was um, I'm a okay. uh, pursuing my uh, master's degree in uh, Celtic studies at uh, okay. St. FX University. So very cool. Yeah. Very, so did you tie any of that into your story? Um, it was a uh, uh, 
Not 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 really like the uh, Celtic stuff, but more so like uh, the stuff that I knew about like uh, the Norse, really, since it was like uh, more more so uh, Norse themed rather than like uh, Celtic themed. So, very cool. Yeah. Very very cool. Okay, we've got a couple more people. Well, we've got one more person saying hi. Hi, Eric. Thank ah. you for joining us. Anytime anyone has a comment or a question for any of the authors, put it in below. We're going to have a question and answer period after everyone's done. Well, if you have a direct question to an author while they're saying their story or a comment, just write it and we'll we'll do it after. But um, for now, I'm going to say goodbye to all of you guys, except for Tim. Tim is going to be up first for reading and we're going to talk <laughs> about his story. Um, and again, I apologize if this is for the authors. If I take you out of the stream, please come back. Okay. Yes, radar. What? Uh, who did that? <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, Kevin just showed up. Sorry. Hold on. We're gonna say Ooh. hi to Kevin. Oh, there hey. we go. Hi. Sorry, I had te technical difficulties. That's all right. I'm gonna. Yeah. You know what, Kevin? Difficult. Kevin difficulties. <laughs> difficulties happen all the time. Don't worry. You just I'm summed adding, up my life. I'm adding you back on too, so that it's all of us together. Oh, there okay. Um, I felt left out for a moment. I know. Yeah, I was going to say. Like, <laughs> you like, felt left out. We do want everyone here. Um, so, Kevin, uh, again, nice to meet you. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Cornwall, Ontario. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. You've got two. I'm calling you Canadian, Ethan, because you're in Canada. <laughs> we've, that's three. This is the first time we've had an equal number of Canadians versus other people in the world. This is amazing. Oh, is it? No, it's cool. Yeah. 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 Um, so what was your theme for the story that you wrote this time? Uh, Werebees. Werebees. Which okay. is very out of my uh, wheelhouse. I, I, this is the first time I've ever written a Werebees story, so it was a lot of fun. Okay, excellent. I can't wait to hear about it. So we are going to, now I'm saying goodbye to everyone again, except for Tim. I won't, Jamie, I'll, I'll leave you on for a little bit. Oh, thank you. <laughs> don't, you're not the first one out again. <laughs> okay, again. Um, so we will see you guys all in a little bit. I'm going to just talk to Tim. We're going to have a little thing and, uh, you guys are going to hang out in the green room and, uh, have fun with the private chat. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just me and you again, sir. I know. Yeah. Yeah. What are we going to do? Yeah. Do? This is it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just, just kind of ramble, rant and rave and ramble on like we usually do. I know. Around. We can't. Yeah. We are on a time. We can talk. <clears throat> yeah. Um, but here's a link to buy if anyone would like to, uh, again, this, this collection is all about like our monsters. <laughs> Sorry. Every time I look down here at other people's cameras, I just laugh. Yeah. It's that. funny. Isn't uh, it? It's just about <laughs> monsters. Like we've got 24 different tales, but 12 different, 12, why am I 12? 12, 12 <laughs> Doing that to a British um, person. <laughs> themes. Yeah. Exactly. 12 different themes. <laughs> So like vampires, ghouls, were beasts, um, haunted dolls, old gods. There's so many different things in here. Um, tell us a little bit about the story that you wrote. Well, um, I did and too. Um, and yeah. yeah, I did too. For t I, like the previous year, because I, I had a story in that as well. I used the monthly things because they're all short word counts yeah. for, to me anyway. Uh, because I mean, you know, I'm like, like they're I, not 500,000 word count, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 That's I, short. I um, so <laughs> my sort of average is about 10k, and that's a short story for me, but um, yeah. I uh, but so I'll use them basically as prompts, so I just fire them and fire them and fire them, um, and then the ones that don't get rejected, I've got them in the bank for collections yeah. and all sorts of other stuff like that. I just think they're great for prompts. Now, I'm so glad the vampires one came up. Because, yeah. as you know, I, I pretty much all I write is I write weird fiction and cosmic horror. I don't really do things like vampire stories. Yeah. It's not really my thing. But I had it uh, because I'd written it for a, um, another project, but the project yeah. got shelved after I'd written the bloody thing. Oh, so I'm, I'm, yeah. So I'm sitting there with this story about vampires going, well, I can't put it in my collection because it doesn't fit. What the hell am I going to do with it? And that came up. So I'm <laughs> delighted that got taken. <laughs> Um, the second one, Eugene Angove loses his marbles, is um, more my t typical style of stuff. I've written a few wow. Angove, Eugene Angove stories now. He's sort of a recurring character for me. Um, bumbling British explorer extraordinaire. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's, so it's, it's, it's a bit bonkers. It's pretty ridiculous, but sort of 
typical me, really. Uh, yeah, so I, I really enjoy these them monthly calls. I have fun with them. It's just let loose. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. it's 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 exciting to see all the different things that people come up with them. Like mm. we, we did switch the 12 to four calls this year yeah. just to... Um, well, I imagine um, so with all the other an all actual because we're going to do four books instead of it being one book right. at the end of the year. We're doing four books and then yeah. like one giant collection of like. Well, I imagine with amazing. all the other calls that it's like it, like finding the time to read through all the subs every month. Yeah, I don't, no, so I don't know how popular it is, but I imagine there's a fair amount. So it's just yeah. like, I'm supposed to keep up. Yeah, exactly. And I think yeah. that's one of the reasons why we decided to switch it. And Simone, they have done such a great job selecting mm. and they they helped out uh, for the they took over uh, Alana, who yeah. started last year yeah. um, on the monthly call. So they took over and then now they're doing the quarterly calls by themselves. And if they need help, we've got some readers uh, available yeah. to them, but they're doing a really good job going through the quarterlies. And I'm really yeah, excited to see how that comes yeah. um because we're doing like the earth fire wind and water yeah. um but what story for you are you reading today uh, i'm gonna read uh, an excerpt of eugene angove loses his marbles oh so, yeah <laughs> perfect yeah okay um i will let you read okie dokie yeah cool and then if you want to do a little yeah i'll do a little little dance or something when I'm yeah finished. anything yeah. really cool. enjoy your time no worries the room is yours marvelous <laughs> <laughs> righty ho yes uh, i'm about to read an excerpt from eugene angove loses and marbles uh, i'm going to come into it sort of part of the way through um so all you need to know so far is that eugene angove and his friend topper truman are playing marbles and a business contact mr walpole has turned up at the door uh and it's basically been shown by by his manservant hampton through to where artifacts have been stored and that's basically where we come in now. Uh, oh, yeah. And um, Topper Truman just threw a wobbler because he lost, like, another game of marbles. They've decided to do double or quits. Uh, but he slammed his fist down on the marbles and the marbles went shooting off everywhere. So the marbles are under furniture and all that kind of stuff. Right, ho, here we go. For close to an hour, the two friends bickered as they scrabbled around on their hands and knees. Due to Eugene's terrible cleaning job, most of the pesky little spheres were coated in a thick film of dust and detritus from the Orkney dig. This slowed down the commencement of their final match even more. Each marble had to be individually wiped before being added to the circle of play. Eventually, they were ready to commence battle. You can go first, Eugene sniffed, flexing his shooting fingers. You need all the help you can get. Topper Truman buffed his favourite Aggie shooter on his sleeve, then lined it up on the starting line. He took a deep breath, and they were off. It was a fast and furious contest. Glass clacked against glass. Prayers were whispered, and oaths spat. Topper took an early lead. It looked like the game was his, when he misfired horribly, allowing Eugene to close the gap between them. When it came down to the nitty-gritty, the two men were neck and neck. It was all to play for. And it was Topper Truman's turn. Truman licked his lips and reached for a suitable shooter. There were two tiny firecrackers in play. They were close to each other, so if he could somehow ricochet them, he could clean up. Due to their diminutive size, he reached for a boulder to give him the best chance of connecting. Eugene was just about to regret allowing boulders in play. The largest of all the marbles could only be included by mutual agreement, and Eugene had been the one to suggest their inclusion. Truman smiled. Victory was going to be sweet. Picking it up between his thumb and forefinger, Topper wiped the boulder off on his sleeve. It was an unusual design, not one he'd seen before. It was dark green, filled with lines and walls, somewhere between a galaxy, a starburst, and an octopus. Placing it on the starting point, Topper Truman leaned forward, closed one eye, and prepared to go in for the kill. What the bloody hell are you playing at, Angove? Just as Topper was about to take his shot, the door burst open, and an irate Mr. Walpole burst into the library, clutching an almost empty decanter in one hand and a list of artifacts in the other. Oi! Topper Truman cried in outrage. You nearly put me off my strike, you oaf! 
Hello, Walpole, Eugene said, not taking his eyes off his competitor's marble. What's the problem this time? Eugene's nonchalance and disinterest enraged the archaeologist even further. You know what the bloody problem is, you blackguard. Where is it? Where's what? Eugene looked at Walpole with his hands raised and a bemused smile playing on his lips. I have no idea what you're blithering on about, man. The artifact you've pinched. I must have it back. It could be dangerous if it falls into wrong hands. Calm down, Walpole. I assure you, I haven't the foggiest notion what you're on about. Walpole waved the list in the air like a flag. The sphere of Yogg-Sothoth. Where is the sphere of Yogg-Sothoth, you bounder? Silence! Topper bellowed at the top of his lungs, stunning Eugene and Walpole. While they were dumbstruck, he leaned forward and took his shot. Time seemed to slow to a crawl as Walpole screamed. <clears throat> In the last second, he'd realised that what Truman was using as a shooter wasn't a marble at all. It was the sphere of yogg -Sothoth. There we go. <laughs> I'm like, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> Well, it was a flourish. I, don't, I, don't I know, know, I noticed that. I just thought I was it was like, part of my thing. Is he or is he just like tentacles? Yeah, tentacles. <laughs> That's perfect. I love your stories. They're so great. Uh, we've got a couple people saying hi. So hello, Bill and Chrissy. And then uh, uh, Eric. Hello. <laughs> hello, all. Hello, all. <laughs> That is the, I, I, like I love uh, I love your stories and like those flourishes that you put in there. Um, yeah, <laughs> not just with your hands, but like with your words. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, I was going to say <laughs> try and write like I gesticulate. <laughs> That's how I write. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I appreciate it. No, <clears throat> just, uh, I really I, I think a lot of people are going to enjoy this story a lot. And um, yeah, uh, Eric says that uh, they love the voices. And I couldn't agree more. <laughs> it's always, it's, I, that's one thing that I love about hearing authors when they read their own work is that um, you hear the tone that they mm. essentially want it read in because there's so many different interpretations of like yeah. the way that you can say things, right? So it's kind of yeah, um, yeah. It's it's kind of interesting. Yeah, I uh, always I always think that when I'm reading something that's by an author by an author like an American author or a Canadian author, and I'm reading it in my accent. Yeah. <laughs> I have to try and try and read it in an American accent, if you know what I mean, to get the full yeah. like of the dialogue. Yeah, I it's understand. Strange. Yeah. Do you know what? Call me up. I will read to you. Oh, awesome. <laughs> I'll put a phone next to the pillow and you can exactly. read. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> My husband will be like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm reading to Tim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we've got uh, Emily says, why marbles? Um, why not? <laughs> you know what? I, I, I don't, to be absolutely honest with you, I'm not entirely sure why, where it came from. I think, um, because all, all of my Eugene Angove stories are like Eugene Angove and the this, 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 and this, this. Yeah. Um, so I was kind of thinking, I wanted to do a Eugene Angove story. And I was like, well, I, I don't want to do and the again, because I've done several like that. And I was like, yeah. And then I was like, it goes mad because round the twist loses his marbles. There we go. Yeah. And it came, and it literally came from the title. That I was just yeah spitballing ideas for a title, and it just came from yeah. that. So, yeah. No, that's perfect. No, I think it's good. Oh, we've got another comment from Emily. She just love this story and miracle growth too. Oh, Emily excellent. is one of the lucky ones that actually did get advanced reader copies oh, of brilliant. both of these. So she has read this one already. So she's loving it. We know that everyone will. No, oh, and I hopefully. do hope they do. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> And we've got a uh, Mendes is the Mendes. <laughs> well, thank you, so, thank you so much for reading and like being here. And uh, always, thank you for submitting. Like, I a big fan of your work, as you know, <laughs> um, and you as a person, but your work mainly. Um, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I'm an ass. My work's fine. <laughs> exactly, but I appreciate that. Um, but no, it's just, uh, it's great to see you, uh, submitting and, um, mm. I'm just, uh, really honored that you're giving me your story. So thank you so much. My pleasure. I'm, I'm <laughs> happy that you take them. <laughs> Especially because right. some of them are so ridiculous. It's just like, 
<laughs> but somebody appreciates what I'm trying to do. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I will talk to you in a little bit. I'm going to go no say goodbye for now, and we're going to say hello to Ethan. So, again, thank you so much for coming. And there we go. Making sure Ethan, there he is. I got like, I think that's what I got. <laughs> yeah. I did. Excellent. Ethan. All right. Ethan, tell us about this story that you are going to present to us. Okay. So uh, the story that uh, uh, is of mine that's uh, featured in Monsters and Mayhem is uh, called Bullwitter, uh, which is about Wendigos or a Wendigo. And it takes place in uh, Vi uh, the Viking Age uh, when uh, the, uh, the Vikings came to uh, North America and landed around sort of the Newfoundland, uh, Nova Scotia area. And um, uh, here we have, and uh, it centers on the uh, char the uh, main character, Torhild, uh, who is a, uh, who is a young Viking woman and a berserker actually. And uh, she, at, uh, she is the only survivor of her um, uh, mercenary of uh, her mercenary group, the rest of which gets uh, slaughtered by a Wendigo, yes. and uh, she's hunted through the woods. And uh, yeah, I like I, I, I wrote it because I I really like Vikings, and I also really like Wendigos. And I thought like there isn't Mash enough, them like, together. Yeah, yeah, putting them together. Like there isn't enough like uh, I don't there know, is fiction not or story. enough yeah, vampire yeah. and not vampire. There is not enough Wendigo Viking yeah. stories out there. Like yeah, exactly. Or just like and now, how did you say that word again? Uh, Bullwetter. Okay. Yeah. I'm not even attempting. But I will say formatting that was fun. <laughs> yeah. You had a, lot, you had a lot of those um, mm -hmm. fun little words yeah. in there. So I enjoyed it. Yeah. It, it uh, means evil winter in Old Norse. So. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Okay. That is my new name. <laughs> However you say it, that's evil that winter. <laughs> so I'm going to. Um, give you the room um sure. and so that you can uh <laughs> do the story uh and we will uh get back to you if if for whatever reason i don't know just go like this and i'll okay i'll see but i should be i'm, I'm listening so Sounds um good. all right all right i hope everyone enjoys and again say it one more time for everyone Bull vetter. all right <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ethan, and uh, today I will be reading an excerpt from uh, my story, Bullwetter. Uh, so sort of the um, uh, context that you need to know about this, it is a story about a young Viking woman, Torhild, uh, who is with her mercenary group in uh, the uh, wilds of uh, somewhere around like Nova Scotia or uh, Newfoundland during the Viking Age and uh, dead of winter. And... Uh, they, unbeknownst to them, uh, they are uh, being stalked and will meet grisly fates uh, at the hands of a creature that none of them have ever seen before in this new world. So without further ado, I will begin. Though Torhild escaped the claws of the beast, its howl raked her ears. The unbound cry, carrying the bitter sharpness of winter, dug into her skull almost as deep as its black talons did her flesh. She staggered through the pines, gripping the torn cloth and skin of her left arm with her right hand. Blood dripped in a damning trail behind her. Dead, she sighed, her breath misty in the winter night. All dead. You remain. She, with her band of mercenaries, had made camp in the woods beneath the shelter of pines, the snow came down heavy, but the winds lay still enough for them to start a fire. They sat around it and shared poems, dreams, and tales of their past exploits. A woman's shriek cut through Half Thor's dream poem about warm mead. He and his brother investigated, bringing axes and their keen sight to pierce the darkness. Torhild and her remaining allies looked to the edge of the firelight, hands itching towards their axes and knives. After minutes of silence, snow crunched through the trees. Half Thor's brother staggered into the firelight, blood covering his face and soaking his clothes. Winter's wicked wraith. His deep voice broke into a squeak and he collapsed. Eight ragged trails crisscrossed over the back of his tunic and flesh. Bone fragments glinted in the firelight. Torhild and her allies rose. She brandished her CX knife, huddling close, huddling back to back with the warriors. 
They planted themselves beside the fire, gazing hard into the dark. Shrieks and blood followed as a pale thing entered the camp from the shadows. It moved as if it were one with the woods. The warrior's eyes sought their attacker's one movement, uh, uh, sought their attacker uh, one moment, only for them to meet their ends in the next. Black claws from the withered fingers gouged unprotected flesh and tore the thickest hide, even finding space between male rings worn by one man. Torhild re realized the carnage only uh, once several allies were slain. She and the three remaining men scattered from the fire as the intruder darted towards them. A man? Torhild had wondered in, the mo in that moment. It walked on two legs and possessed two arms. However, it wore no grace despite the deep chill. Its skin bore no color of warm blood or exposed uh, exposure to the sun, making the gore upon it, it darker. Steam from its fresh kills wafted from the remains on the ground and upon itself, but no misted breath left its stained mouth. Shadows covered its face. It slashed a man's throat, moving between them as if it glided inches above the snow. As they gurgled on the ground, it stooped over one man and placed its mouth upon his neck. Skin and sinew snapped, blood dribbling into the snow as the thing chewed his flesh. Torhild backed away, CX trained on the monster. Her remaining allies charged in, axes raised and teeth clamped in snarls as they swung at the creature. Their attacks cut deep, but another slowed as it, as it as slunk behind uh, one man and tore his back. Torhild advanced as her allies screamed. Her CX uh, sank between the creature's ribs, but it did not flinch or scream. No blood welled from the wound. Her fingers, as they slipped over the guard, shivered against the ice-cold flesh. The creature turned its claws on her as she retreated, and she took a blow upon her left arm while the while she stumbled away. Go, bellowed Suni, the last man standing. I'll meet the others in Valhalla. Stay out of Helheim, woman. He charged the creature, and it, it char and it changed its course from Torhild. It whipped about and strode over the snow, stirring up flakes from the ground, but left no tracks. Torhild clutched her wound and ran into the dark, her eyes stranding in the blue winter's pall. Suni's shouts of battle faded as she wove through the pines. Low-hanging branches scratched her face. Snow dusted her short, braided hair, drifting down the back of her neck and melting against her fear-warmed skin. Her flight's speed increased when a howl broke through the air. Its mournful ululation combined tones of a man in pain, a wolf's call for the hunt, and a blizzard, a wind shrieking through the forest. Of the legends concerning trolls, ghosts, and other monstrous forest dwellers, there were none Torhild knew of like the thing chasing her. This land is full of new terrors, she thought for the realizing the danger of the wield itself. Even if she escaped the thing, found shelter amid the trees and endured the night, the native people of the new land, called Skraylings in her tongue, outnumbered her. No doubt they hunt in these woods too, she thought. The forest lay quiet, the trees moans and rasped, being the only things to break the stillness. The monster's howl drifted in on occasion, with the spans between it, its utterances lengthening. Uh, are you muted? <laughs> now I'm muted. I was like, I was just trying to fix my hat, and I'm like, oh my gosh, just give me yeah. thumbs up. As like, yeah. I'm like this. <laughs> so was, that was great. I love. Um, I'm a big fan of a little bit of gore, and you gave me that in a story, and I really appreciate. That. Nice. Um, do that. I don't. Uh, that's what I really enjoy about this collection is that it has <laughs> such the variety of horror for people that like the little bit more detailed gruesomeness mm -hmm. and people that like like a quiet gotcha at the end kind yeah. of horror so um <laughs> i really uh i really appreciate it i think a lot of people will really enjoy the um um the world that you created like the mm -hmm. what you did there uh we do have a question for you oh hold on sure. here we go uh do you think wendigos could exist this is from emily uh i i definitely feel like they could exist like um and like that's the thing about like um i don't know like folklore in like any culture really is that like there has to be something out there that made people start like thinking about like why these like things like ghosts or like um fairies or like wendigos like why they like why they exist and uh maybe <laughs> uh maybe it's it might not exactly be like what like pop culture has like um like made these monsters, yeah, yeah like maybe like in like what like how we interpret these monsters to be but maybe 
like way back when, um, like in the old days, there probably there definitely were like people who uh, would commit these taboos like cannibalism in these like very close knit uh, tribal communities during like these really harsh times, which is probably like why there are there is that why that like taboo exists, why people like fear that idea so much of somebody basically like becoming a monster and uh, seeing their like the rest of their community not really as like yeah you know their community members or their family like just a food source really like I, <laughs> so yeah <laughs> absolutely yeah i think that's absolutely true and uh, we've got like, lots of comments actually um yes. bill says they appear in the tales of many uh north american native cultures and they definitely mm -hmm. do it's one yeah. of the more prominent ones uh eric went <gasps> <laughs> Jason says it seems well studied. I was like, Jason, I'm sorry, uh, Josiah. Um, and I'm like, that is probably because you <laughs> you study a lot of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. I want to like have I want not only to like have the Viking stuff be authentic, but I also wanted to have like the Wendigo stuff be authentic because like it's it'd be really easy just to go like um, you know, uh scary ice cannibal monster, but like I but since like native uh like uh indigenous like North American folklore is so um in oral history is so rich, like yeah, it, like absolutely like there's just so much there that like you that like stuff that like actually exists that you can draw from without having to like resort to you know like appropriation or um just like or complete fantasy, you know? Yeah, no, I completely understand. I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, Bill said, excellent. You've got a Chris saying, that was fantastic, Ethan. Thank you. Yeah, let's see what this one says. We love the story, but loved it even more hearing you read it. You can really see the story unfold. And I agree, again, great mm -hmm. way of yeah. doing, uh, this is why I love doing the author, so we can kind of see it. Eric says, love it, Ethan. Any reason you made the main character a female warrior? Um, I... Um... Females are amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're yeah, they're pretty cool. Like, obviously, like with like the Norse sagas and stuff, you have that like tradition of like shield maidens and stuff, which is like always like pretty neat to to do and and see. And I don't know. I just thought and like uh, Torhild was actually a, a character that I wrote another story for for like a creative writing writing class when I was yeah. uh, in my undergrad. And like people people in that class liked her, so I thought like. Might as well bring her back and have her yeah. uh, count her a win to go this time. No, absolutely. Like if you can draw from something and like have it connect to another story, sometimes it even makes character even more rich, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, we got an amazing story. And I agree with this one. A good nighttime read just before bed. And for mm -hmm. me, yeah. wholeheartedly. <laughs> um, we do have one more question and then we're going to go on to the next writer. Ethan, what would you feel more, fear more, uh, the Wendigo or a Skinwalker? That that's a very good question. Like both both are very terrifying in yeah. uh, like in their own ways, um, and like some of them are like pretty similar. But um, um, I guess since I like am more around like the sort of like northeastern area of like North America, it's more likely that I would encounter a Wendigo. So um, like um, like there's that, but like I also know. I don't know. There, there are like some ways to beat it, but like I think a skinwalker might probably be more terrifying since like there's you like never so much, know. Yeah, there's so much more like mystery and like mystique about like those things. Yeah. Like, with, like with Wendigos, there are like some confirmed ways to like deal with them, but skinwalkers confirmed are, ways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. There, but no, yeah. Both of them, I wouldn't want to be uh, locked in a room with either one of them. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> no. All right. Well, thank you so much for reading and submitting and like letting us publish this story. I think people are going to love it. And again, if people um, are interested, you can read it. Sorry. Uh, you can buy the book right there. <laughs> Monsters and Mayhem. <laughs> buy the book. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take you off and it's going right. to be Jamie's time. And again, thank you so much. Thank you for having me on. This was amazing. Absolutely. Good. I'm glad you had fun. We're not even done yet. All right, Jamie, we are ready. Hello. Hello. Great to have you. So tell us, what are you reading? What's this story that you wrote? What are you going to read for us today? 
So I wrote for the October theme, which was Haunted yeah. Dolls. And um, yeah, it, it's not a story I would uh, initially find myself attracted to. I, I'm not one of those people that watches films about haunted dolls or anything like this. But when I saw it, Why not? I got an idea and yeah. I had to do it. So here I am. Here you are. And you're about to read it to us. Yeah, it, it's kind of surreal because I've watched several of these now. And oh. and now I'm on one. And it's, now you're on it. Yeah. <laughs> I know the first time I did a, a live event, I was like, look, mom, I'm famous. <laughs> <laughs> sent her an email, sent her a text message. And she was like, how do I open it? I'm like, it's, <laughs> it, it's, uh, it's an age thing, maybe. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's my mother thing. But, um, okay. but no, it's, 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 it's exciting to do these, uh, the live events and um, like going from watching them and like, hey, I'm doing them now is. I think there's sometimes it's surreal and a lot of fun. So I'm excited to have you here and uh, I'm going to leave you the room so you can just jump on in. If you want to give us a little bit more preview of the story, you can, if you want to just start reading, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Have okay. So um, yeah, I'm going to read a couple of pages from my story here. Uh, the It's written in the first person from a woman's perspective. Uh, obviously, I am not a woman. Uh, so you're going to have to uh, imagine that when I'm reading the story. OK, so Angela, Angelica exclusively wore preteen pink, but spent summer evenings ripping the wings of injured green bottles. I can estimate the year by the Spice Girls and Marilyn Manson CD she shifted between on the stereo. A kaleidoscopic flittering of emotions vented by a child who kept two faces, one effervescent, the other monstrous. When the metal music came on, I ducked under the cupboard. A week before Mabel fostered Angelica, she came to my room and assessed me coolly while dabbing her mouth with a napkin. Burnt oil from a fried lunch wafted from the kitchen. She settled me on her knee with a hairbrush and said, You have a sister coming, Catherine. You'll have to mind her temper. The bristles touched my scalp, and she brushed, careless of the knots that snagged and my silent wincing. Her dad was prone to violent outbursts. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, but you'd know all about that. Remember your daddy? She pinched my shoulder. I've told her all about you, Kathy, and she is ever so eager to play. I could but look up at her. In the autumn of 1996, Mabel ushered Angelica into my bedroom and encouraged her to lie down. There was only one bed, a single. Angelica wheeled her luggage through the door, squinted at the sequin duvet cover, and threw herself down. Mabel clapped, perhaps seeing the incautious dive as daughterly acceptance. I endeavoured to blend in with the wall. Oh, said Mabel, forgetting herself. She trotted over to poke my belly. This is Kathy. When you're sad, you can whisper all your worldly secrets to her. She never talks, not a word. When you're mad, you can twist and pull her and she never complains. So long as you never hurt anyone outside this room, you will have a place with me, and Kathy will love you always. She left me and kissed Angelica on the cheek on the way out. I'll cook us some pasta. Pack your things. Make yourself at home. I watched Angelica empty her luggage, and she returned my attentiveness with furtive glances. Clothes, CDs, and a Game Boy all dumped on the bed. After some time, she appeared to, forgotten, to have forgotten me entirely and was fully engaged in the task at hand. Then she pulled a photograph from her luggage and clutched it to her chest, out of sight. Her shoulders hitched. When she turned on me, her eyes came over misty and accusatory. Her mouth contorted at my voyeurism. 
She dropped the photograph, stomped across the bedroom, and slapped me clean. Don't look at me! I bounced against the shelves and clapped the floor, my breath knocked out. A branding of her palm seared my cheek. Angelica loomed overhead, chest heaving, mouth wide with disbelief. But soon her panting calmed, her lips settled into something thin and wicked. The test finished, she regarded me with slit blue eyes. Think you're something special, don't you? She wiped a tear from her chin. Beautiful. I think you're the ugliest little doll that ever lived. And from that day forward, I was her outlet. Angelica grew mad, and I became the subject of her torment. I wasn't always like this. I was a real girl once, born in Brentwood on August 1st, 1979. Mum was a barmaid. Dad was a drunk. Mum sold herself to make ends meet. Dad stole the money to buy more booze. One could never keep up with the other. When Mum worked nights and Dad drowned his misery at home, he raked me over the coals. The bullying was verbal at first, but escalated when puberty came knocking. A year later, Mabel fostered me. For a while I found her disarming and considered myself lucky. She was no older than my parents, though already affected a grandma aesthetic. She wore her dark locks in a perm, was fond of knitted clothes, and looked stout and frumpy. Her being a spinster was fine too. Fantastic. I didn't need another dad. The problem started because of my shyness. I seldom spoke because I'd learned chatterboxes got smacked. And when I did speak, it was in the acerbic stabs ingrained from a previous life. See, the only thing more terrific than her embraces was my anxiety of being abandoned. Mabel didn't take kindly to that. Misread my behaviour as rejection. It wasn't a couple of months before our fights turned physical. I needn't explain how. It's not cathartic for me anymore. And catharsis is my reason for penning this. But the bit Dr Daniels calls a delusion, that's, another sp that's worth another spin in the brain box. The fact that bitch turned me into a doll. End. Loved it. <laughs> Loved <Thank you>. it. <laughs> um, yeah, I was saying your voice is uh, to me is haunting. I think you did it really, really well. In fact, uh, Josiah also agrees. Pretty. I think you did the feminine well. Oh, thank um, you. So I was, I was say, worried I about you, that. <laughs> I'm like, I, I think you just did a great reading. So thank you so much. It's such a, I, I really enjoyed the, like the descriptions that you did in this one. It was um, really, really quite creepy. Was there any inspiration to this? Like, was there a specific doll that you imagined or had as a child or mother or like sibling had or great aunt or something? Um. The real inspiration, I, I was walking my dog, maybe, and I, I was scratching my head thinking, how can I get into Sanfology? Uh, <laughs> I have nothing for dolls, like, really, no idea at all. And just while I was walking, I thought, well, there's enough stories about dolls haunting people. What if I wrote a story about people haunting a doll? And that was the idea, essentially. Absolutely loved it. I think you did a great job. Uh, we've got some comments from people. Intense. I agree. <laughs> Creepy story. I also agree. Um, an excellent reading should be an audible. But I agree. You're going to have to do a book for me now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I'll practice. Yes. <laughs> That was good. Well, I, I love that you, you wrote this story and I'm so glad that you submitted it to us so that we could put it out because I think it's a fantastic story. And again, like a lot of people get creeped out by haunted dolls. And I think that this um, should really, for those people that love reading this would really up their alley. I think it's a, a great addition to the collection. So thank you so much. Thanks um, for having me. Yeah, thanks. You did it. Officially, yeah. <laughs> officially read. <laughs> All right, thanks so much. Okay, Raider. So we're gonna say goodbye, and then I'm gonna bring everyone up after uh, Raiders. Um, but oh, we got one more. Loved it. There you go. <laughs> All 
All right. Uh, I'll see you in a little bit. Okay. Radar, are you ready? Two whole thumbs up. Oh, oh there we go. <laughs> oh, I'm doing. If you're giving me two thumbs up, I'm showing everybody. Uh oh. Believe me. I should have done this half thumb. I know. I'd be like, Meh. That's <laughs> what I normally get. Oh, really? Oh, well. No, I'm ready no, to go. People are, people are generally like, oh, yeah, I'm ready. Or they run or their camera falls off or something. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm excited to have your story here. Tell me a little bit about your story. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's with the ghoul theme. Um, yeah. So, and I, I'll, I'll admit, uh, I, I didn't know what a ghoul was. Yeah, research was sure. done. Your research was done because all, all I've ever heard of ghouls, I don't know if you've ever played the Fallout games. I haven't, uh, but I know everybody that does, like everybody oh, does okay. except for me. I just don't play video games. Yeah, so there, there's like an enemy in it called ghouls. And they just call them ghouls. I don't know if they eat like dead meat or stuff. but And I just, I was like, oh, okay, so we're just writing about fallout characters let me yeah. quickly google search that and was like oh no it's more Wait. than that yeah. <laughs> hold on there's there's hundreds of years of tradition behind this war yeah. <laughs> it's not just fallout um yeah. strangely <laughs> enough <laughs> whoa um but it was a great call um and uh so i was like well you know the competition is always stiff at erie river there's so many talented authors yeah. um you're a great publisher. So I was like, I got to put some twist on this. You know, I got to figure something else outside the box. So what if instead of just, you know, probably the usual, like, let's get together, let's hunt some ghouls, you know, the monster hunter or whatever. What if it was about a ghoul who's trying to blend in with other humans? Yeah. And so I was like, well, what's the best place that a ghoul could hang out, eat dead people and have a good time? Hey, yo, funeral home. I know. <laughs> Like, this is a great idea. Now we know if you ever become a ghoul or a zombie, what your occupation will be. Yeah, like, actually, everyone efficient. after the story should start to start looking at a funeral home supervisors a little yeah. more closely. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Just in case the zombie apocalypse happens, you will be able to like. <laughs> that is again assuming that you become a zombie, but still, right. or a ghoul. Anyways, um, well, I'm excited. I Well, uh, thanks so much. I'm glad that you wrote the story and submitted it. It's <laughs> awesome. Uh, we had, uh, yeah, I, I think the person that read it and picked it was like, I really like the story. I was like, well, good, publish it. <laughs> <laughs> Great, go for it. Yeah. And I, I'm glad that they liked it. Uh, yeah, so. me too. Because it's, it's a fun, it's a fun, a fun read for a horror story. So I was going to say, I don't like to make my stories dense. I'm just not that kind of guy. So yeah, no. And uh, again, that's why the great thing about having the anthologies, right, is that we get a big like swath of swath. I'm going to just say that word. A uh, variety of different types of horror because um, that's what makes them fun and something for everybody. So um, I'm going to leave you the room so that you can get right into this um, and just have fun with it. All right. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so a little bit of context before I get started with this. Um, I'm kind of dropping you guys in about one third of the way into the story. Um, what's happened so far is that our main character, Mortimer, is in charge of a funeral home. Um, he is not what he seems to be. Um, and he currently is in the middle of a, of a wake for someone and he gets some cravings um, for something a little more than just the hors d'oeuvres that have been served. Um, so let's jump right in. Mortimer managed to exit the crowd without experiencing another unpleasant rumble, but he knew that another one was likely on the way. He stumbled down the poorly lit hallway that led towards the preparation room. A gurgling in his stomach caused Mortimer to stop dead in his tracks as he forcefully tried to prevent his body from ripping loose of the tight-fitting outfit he was currently wearing. It took several moments for the unpleasant sensation to pass, at which point Mortimer scrambled the last dozen or so feet into the pitch black room before him. He immediately flipped the switch and patiently waited the few milliseconds it took for the lights to come on before progressing into the room. He glanced over the options laid out before him, desperately trying to find a suitable candidate to meet his needs. 
Mortimer haphazardly pushed past the table containing the body of an elderly woman. She had died three days prior. So her flesh wasn't quite as fresh as what Mortimer normally preferred. Besides, she was a well-known member of the town, so her funeral was more likely than not going to be an open casket. Someone would certainly raise concern if they discovered that the deceased body of such a beloved member of the community was randomly missing an appendage. Mortimer didn't need to concern himself with the corpse of the elderly woman or the several remains laid out next to her. He pushed past them all, all until he reached the last body in the room. It was the corpse of a young man who had just been brought in less than a few hours prior. He had died in a horrific car accident, one that which ripped half his face off, among other gruesome injuries. The unfortunate soul's wife had managed to survive the crash, but she was in the hospital for the moment and was most likely not to leave there for the next week or two. Mortimer knew that, based on the circumstances surrounding this particular cadaver, the body would be perfect for his needs. Thanks to the damage the individual had sustained before death, Mortimer highly doubted that anyone would notice if something was missing. He eagerly picked up his bone saw from where he had last placed it and began hacking into the corpse's left hand, just above the wrist. Mortimer furiously worked, easily tearing through the tissue that was still relatively soft. It took but a few minutes to completely sever the appendage from the body. There was a great deal of excitement that rushed through Mortimer as he picked up the limb and bit into it. The taste of dead flesh, hit, flesh hitting his tongue activated his taste buds, causing him to let out a grunt of pleasure. It was only while eating such delicacies that Mortimer could really feel anything at all. Over the past few decades, the amount of emotions and other sensations he had felt in his younger years had slowly faded. Most of the things that had made him remotely human had vanished. Except for the physical pains of hunger and being able to taste meat, Mortimer had grown into something truly unnatural. And see. There you go. Pow. <laughs> All right, awesome. Thank you so much. I, I, uh, I enjoyed some of the, the funny commentary that you put in there. Hey, I tried. Well, not, that, not funny, but you were. Right. Yeah. Got to spice it up. Um, but I do have a question. Yes. Why didn't he just eat the butts? Eat the butts. Well, like, do you want to eat a butt? I'm sitting, like, when I was reading through it, I'm like, okay, is it the bones that he enjoys to, like, suck the marrow out of? Or is it the flesh? Because really, just, like, flip the old lady over and just, like, hack off her, uh, her butthole. I mean, not her butthole. Oh, <laughs> That's your answer, like, ew. Back of the thighs. Like, if I was, I'm just saying, you know what? I, I, and because, like, I think too deeply about if I was a zombie, how, or a ghoul, how would I eat the flesh off of people so that no one knew? And my head is like, eat the back half. Eat the back half. Well, well more I'm like, kind just of like, a... cut off a little, cut just off a little, a little cheek. <laughs> Maybe the left one. A little bit of the yeah, right, too. Exactly. I, I think that. A um... little upper thigh. Right. I think that Mortimer is a bit of a kind of like little full of himself. So he thinks yeah. he's a little above that. So he's like, I don't need yeah. to eat someone's butt. You know, I need the prime cuts. That's what the I'm prime after. Cuts. The prime, the prime cut. The prime cuts of me. Again, the thigh. <laughs> uh -oh. I feel like the thigh would. Okay. And now let's talk seriously. I feel like the thigh would be the prime cut of the meat. Of, of a human? I don't. See, I don't know. Okay, do maybe... we need to have this conversation? We do need to have this conversation. Let's bring everyone else in there. Bring everyone else in. Come on. In a second, yeah. Let's just see. We do have some comments first. Uh, I only knew about ghouls because of Supernatural. That's from Shelby. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Uh, yeah. That's fair. Uh, Supernatural, you know what? It's good for a lot of, like, that was a really great okay. horror thing that got people into horror. So I'm enjoying that. Uh, Radar right. Love. Just like, hey, that's my favorite golden earring song. Yeah. Which I'm sure it's everyone's favorite golden earring song. <laughs> uh, great sense of humor. Food is better when tenderized. Uh, you you know what? Valid comment. Valid. Valid. That's, that's a fact right there. Yeah. Hashtag truth. Hashtag truth. <laughs> Hashtag facts. facts. Uh, Mortimer seems smarter than your average ghoul. It's some kind of hybrid. Is he undead? 
man, I this is so interesting doing this live read and stuff because because like you guys people are putting... saying like what kind of ghoul has like brain capacity, right? But you know? is he an early ghoul? No, you said decades. Decades. So, but it's it's so interesting because like you and Eric here are putting so much thought and like trying to figure it out, and I'm like, I, it's a cool idea. <laughs> <laughs> cool idea. Yeah, it's cool. I, I was it like, cool. It is cool. <laughs> Mortimer wants fresh dead. Don't we all, Emily? Don't we like, all? Like he doesn't. Uh, like I feel like a good twenty-eight day age is the breath. The breath. Oh. <laughs> The bet, you know, again, another thing that like no one's going to be checking. Yeah, I was going like, to say that's profit. Anyways, inappropriate. I'm going to add everyone else and they can tell me where the best. Tim is like dying to put He's his like, I'll tell you what the best part is. is. Up next. <laughs> then Ethan. I just wanted to jump in quickly on ghouls uh, about like you're <laughs> saying about the, 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 the mind of the ghoul <clears throat> because ghouls aren't your standard like your zombie, that kind of thing. <clears throat> the Lovecraftian ghoul, uh, which is a corpse eat subterranean corpse eater, um, but they're very cultured. Uh, they're and they do try and get in get a buy in our society. Don't they also have their own like civilization too? Like they're yeah yeah yeah. Of course they do. Yeah, yeah. Um, they, they they have a civilization in the dreamlands and also mm -hmm. uh, subterranean cities and all that kind of business. But um, there's also a thing of they they have they plant cuckoos in nests. They'll steal human babies. And put ghoul babies Ooh. in with human families to get ghouls into our society and that kind of thing. They're very sneaky oh. devils, our ghouls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so they, they go. <laughs> just thought that might help. On the, cuts of meat, on the cuts of meat, because I've been a chef. I don't like, let's get to the real thing. Like, you yeah. were a chef. I was, yes. Tell us where years. the best human body uh, part to eat would now, be. No, I would like the rump would actually be a, a decent cut. Um, but I think the best cut on a human would probably be the bicep or the car because mm. you've got to have a certain amount of fat on it but you don't want too much in it that it becomes grisly like but you a need a bit eye. of fat in there to keep the keep the keep it tender and also for flavor so it needs to, you need some marbling in there so yeah there we there go tim, tim saved me twice yeah <laughs> <laughs> does anyone else want to ask uh I know uh, Emily just said ghoul changeling, and that's what I was thinking. I was like, I didn't realize that ghouls did the changeling mm. thing, but that's yeah, terrifying. Yeah, I actually, now well, I understand I actually why wrote, um, one my nephews that. are so crazy. Yeah, I actually wrote one for that about the ghoul changeling, but that's good. Mm. Yeah, I've done a few stories about the ghoul changelings. Uh, the weird fiction writer Caitlin R. Kiernan has done whole like, books on it. A Daughter of Hounds is one if you want to look into ghoul changelings because that's i'm writing this they're, down, they're described I, as almost this, I, alien. Yes, yeah uh, i've never really looked into too much into ghoul like fiction yeah. so i read quite a lot now. of ghoul fiction so there we go <laughs> oh well, i know you would know you've got to have a hobby so. haven't you <laughs> like this is right up your alley what do you guys think uh jamie and ethan do you want to get in on the best part of a human to eat or are you passing um it, I don't know. That's that's also something that I've had like a morbid <laughs> curiosity about. Like obviously, um, like I, I don't know. I, I watched Red Dragon recently. That's like the prequel to Silence of the Lambs. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, um, <laughs> in that, like he, uh, like uh, Hannibal Lecter is like, uh, like he uh, tells like the main character, like I think I'll eat your heart first. Mm -hmm. Like it seems like, uh, like. Yeah, he, he like. Why does he likes anyone to want for, to eat awful? I just yeah. don't understand. Yeah, he like it, it seems like yeah, it seems like Hannibal likes going for like the the organs and stuff like the liver and yeah. the um and mm. the heart. But uh, I mean, I guess that's like interesting. But like, I guess it would be like I don't know, kind of like chewy if you like cooked it wrong. Again, do you want to eat? Well, hearts heart? you have to no. stew. You have to <laughs> stew them for a long time, yeah. or they're tough as old boots because you yeah, do lamb right. hearts. You have to yeah. stew them for a long time, or they're Tough as hell. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So Are they Hannibal still tough after um, stew them? Time on his hands. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, what? what What's the best cut to jerky? Because I'm jerky. just wondering. Yeah, Asking for some, a friend. Michelle wants some human jerky. Everyone in the comments, let's get on this. <laughs> let's get on the black market. I know. Probably look at I'm just belly strips around strips from around the ribs, I would say. Yeah, I was thinking yeah. like side. Okay. Yeah, sort of yeah, sort of flanks, I would say. Love handles, that kind of bit. 
<laughs> this it's is a great conversation. I could be writing something. Like, it doesn't mean that I want to eat it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Right? That's what they all say. This is, you know what? This is all research, purely <laughs> research, everybody. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I say when anybody ever sees my search history. <laughs> it's research. Uh, if anyone has some questions, throw them out. Uh, Eric said, I think this is funny, and we thought some of the stories were dark. Uh, <laughs> oh, got me. <laughs> never met me. <laughs> yeah. The, um, uh, Emily's got a question, and I think this is a funny, and she did ask a question earlier too. Uh, would you want to live in your story? I think let's talk specifically about the stories that you guys wrote today. Would anyone want to live in like either that world or would you want to be that character maybe? I think I would want to be Mortimer. That's a pretty cool gig, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you were a good now that you know that yeah. like take the back you know. half. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Get, you know, you get free food, you get free butt cheeks whenever you want. Bada bing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Tim, I would you, so you want to live? I, I definitely would. Uh, I basically maybe not when like there's an old god crashing through the drawing room, but yeah. um, but I would definitely like to get to, to meet up and have a couple of brandies with Mister Ango. I bet me and him could raise some hell. I tell you, <laughs> it's my kind of chap. You know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what about you, Ethan? I oh. feel like you would absolutely want to live in this time period. You're like, yes. <laughs> I mean, put me like, in there. I, I mean, like, I would like there would be aspects of it that I would be interested in, like, you know, actually being there, like, firsthand to, like, actually see, like, you know, old Norse people or, like, uh, yeah, just like all that. But um, the, at the same time, like, my world is also sort of like engineered to basically or like designed to sort of like everything that is like not the main characters is trying to kill them, <laughs> basically. So I feel like the old Norse. Yeah. They, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. But, um, so kind of yes, but also no, I don't want to die. Like which it, is understandable. Like it, yes, but like yes, as long as I get like some time to prepare for it, I guess. You get to train for a year, you can bring your own gear. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah, exactly. That's that's okay. a good deal. <laughs> yeah. Uh Jamie, what about you? You're on mute. Uh, no, like my story is like a really <laughs> somber, <laughs> horrible story. Uh, no. no, I wouldn't want to live in it. No. Like, I'd rather live in Ethan's story. That that, that yeah. was exciting, you know. I honestly, I would love to do that. I feel like I I would, I would love to just bash someone's face in sometimes. <laughs> and like, it would be okay. Yeah. Like right now, I could yeah. do that, but I'd go to jail. But like, when people are like, oh yeah, she's just a warrior, I'd be like, yeah. fuck yes. I mean, heck yes. It's a license to kill. Yeah. yeah. Simpler yeah. times. As well as you were doing it to uh, increase your own reputation, it'd be fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Shelby says the past was so unsanitary. Yes. To... No Purell in the it. <laughs> it was, I agree, it was probably very unsanitary. What about a ghoul eating a mummy's organs? Oh man, I feel like Would the that organs have to be dry, right? Oh, oh, oh that's not oh, about the well, to, It Not's... depends on the mummy because sometimes mm. they would do a honey, honey emulsified mummy for medical purposes, and then well, that the sounds delicious. Mummies were yeah. salt, right? right? So I feel like a salted mummy would be jerky. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mummy scratchings for all those in the UK. <laughs> 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 Okay, uh, we got. If anyone has any more questions, we're going to be wrapping up very soon. Um, if you have any questions, throw them down. Uh, Emily's got another one. What are your biggest fears you write about? Do you guys write about your biggest fears? Is that something that you do, or like, do you try to terrify yourself when you're writing, or do you avoid it? Like, I wrote a uh, story about giant earwigs. Because I a good one. hate your <laughs> Oh, there you go. And That's like it's in butterflies, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, in, it's in the butterflies book. Um, I because I hate like that the bugs that I hate the worst. Um, so I wrote something and I kind of I still every time I see one, I almost I want to scream and then I want to like hammer it to death. Um, but I'm like it's it's getting better. Um and how then often I also are you seeing earwigs? Earwigs freak me out, man. Yeah, but how often are you seeing them? Like I, I live in a place where earwigs are like 
a part of society. Oh, really? Okay, I'm not going up to Canada. Never mind. No, don't, don't, don't. Uh, no, I'm staying here of, in Kansas. No, we've got a lot of wood in the back of my house and like for like a wood pile. And I think like they get in, in between the wood pile. So it's like, <laughs> <laughs> um, like I don't see them in the house. I see them like out in the wild kind of thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but do you guys write something that like terrifies you just to get over it or? Uh, I don't think I ever have, but that's because I'm deathly terrified of heights and I just don't know how to write about it that well. But most of my writing process is, huh, that's a cool idea. Let me that's write cool that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Has yeah, anyone... I'm, yeah, I'm kind of similar on that. that scared you? I'm kind of similar there. I tend to write things that I think would be cool turning murderous. I like to <laughs> yeah. turn the everyday murderous. Um, yeah. It's hard because I, I don't have any ma major kind of phobias. It's like I love spiders. I love all that kind of stuff. I'm, um, so I don't have them kind of conventional phobias that you could write about. My, my yeah. phobias are all like existential. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just like... Yeah. Where do we go after we die? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You oh, like, can't write about that. Yeah. Just someone disappearing and then a blank book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, nothingness, yeah. the void. Well, I tell you, do to write about the void a lot. So uh, there, there we yeah. go. <laughs> Sorry, I have to make a comment on this. Uh, Are earwigs spiders? I was picturing a wig with fake ears. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Shelby. <laughs> Beautiful. This is a Google. Ah. Do you Shel know what? Shelby I'm going to, you're going to have weekend. to read Infested because Infested is about these giant earwig like creatures uh, mm. infesting people. That's coming out by CM Forest by Erie River Publishing. Oh, but it's go. really good. Read it. Plug. Oh, it's, it's delight. I got to send you the arc, Tim. He did a great job. Like, oh, yeah. Uh, we, we edited it and, like, oh, so nice. awesome. Nice. Disgusting. I love it. Yeah, yeah I um, really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I'll yeah, get a chance to like read it. it. I'll so, think yeah. you'll like it even better. Um, yeah. Ethan, do you have, do you write anything that you like fear? Um, yeah. I, I, yeah, that's, that's a good question. Cause like, I'm also like, like I, I do like, uh, I do like it when like, I, I don't know, write something like an idea or like a story where like, like I can like scare myself, but that like really happens. Cause it's usually just like, I don't know, more in like the, uh, like, I don't know, say, uh, like the Sam Raimi vein of horror, where it's just like, try to like, excite or like, um, scare mm -hmm. other people. Um, yeah. Like, e even though it's like, kind of like a wide net to do, but I, I also have like, things like Fear of Heights, which is like, a <laughs> interesting, would be an interesting thing to write about, or like, um, another fear is, that I have is like, you know, wasting potential, which is also like more of a like existential thing that yeah. could, okay. yeah, um, yeah. like, it could have like horror done about it. Like I actually did write a like short story that I haven't like uh, submitted anywhere yet about a, like a, a monk um, in medieval Ireland who basically just like gives into like hedonism and just like wastes away um, <laughs> uh, basically. But yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> Uh, otherwise, I um, just try to <laughs> try and uh, scare other people or like make them uh, or just like try and spook them out. <laughs> yeah, no, totally understand. Yeah. Okay, just before we go on, I tried to draw an earwig for you. Imagine that, <laughs> but like terrifying. Yeah, you got the little pincers on its ass. <laughs> yeah, I, I got I got the pincher on the ass. Yeah, oh yeah, oh I see your hand was over it. Sorry. <laughs> front oh, and go. front and back. Okay, uh, Jamie, do you write anything that scares you or? Have you ever written anything that scares you? Uh, I don't really have the typical phobias either. Am I the like, only one that's scared of like one thing? Everyone's like, oh, I'm scared of death. Are you what are you heights? scared of? Like peppermint? <laughs> it's too spicy. There's too much flavoring of peppermint. No, no, no. I actually have a friend that was scared of peppermint. That's oh, why really? I thought you like oh. when you were saying oh. um, it's very weird. She cannot brush her teeth with normal toothpaste. Um, but what kind of phobia do you have? Like phobias of like insects or clowns or anything like that, or is it more of? I don't like sharks. I like the black dead eyes. Yes, um, see that okay. is something you can write though, because the deep yeah. blue sea. Mm. 
Maybe I should. I haven't written Maybe it. You yet. should. I will not not that I want to like press you, but we are doing it calls from beneath, and that can be anything that's below the surface. Oh, okay. and include water. Oh, can it, it now? <laughs> so just letting you know. Tim's on the rampage. Uh -oh. <laughs> Time for this, this chat to make an appearance. In the green room, everyone. Nice. Like, so I was trying not to look at him through my screen because he kept playing yeah. on. Uh, but no, sharks are a real fear because, like, you're right. Like, they do have those dead ass eyes where it's like there's mm. no soul, there's just teeth. Yeah. I, no, I think I watched problem. Jaws too young too. <laughs> oh, that'll do it. Yeah, yeah. That'll yeah. definitely do it. Um, yeah, that's a tagline right there. No soul, just teeth. <laughs> well, I'm writing that down. Don't you guys feel that? Just. Yeah, write that down. Yeah. No soul, just teeth. It's too late. Some bad B movies already heard it. I know <laughs> someone's already like, oh, mm. I got an idea. But anyways, well, thank you so much for. Um, for coming everyone it was awesome like getting to know you guys and being able to like chit it's always fun to like chit chat in real in real life <laughs> <laughs> i love the fact uh, that this is real life now <laughs> this is as <laughs> real as it gets i never leave my house anymore no, same I, I, i've basically been a shut in for about three years now <laughs> um but no it's uh like these stories are so unique and they are so vast vastly different um like the tone of them um the themes of them obviously um but it's really exciting to see like everyone's personality coming through their words as well which i think is um awesome when we can do these uh these things so again monsters and mayhem on sale right now you can click the link oh, i'll put the link on later uh but it's books to read.com slash monsters mayhem and it's also available for 99 cents on Godless and 99 cents on our PayHip uh, site as well. If you um, look at our Facebook page, I have the link on that. So if anyone wants to buy that, it's on sale for one whole week at only 99 cents. So um, get on it. Bargain. Yes. Buy the book. I mean, yeah. And paperback and hardcover. Uh, those are available everywhere, so you can ask your local store to purchase it um, and put it in their store or, or their library to carry it, um, or you can order it online. But thank you, everyone, for coming, and we're going to watch that trailer one more time, and then we are out. All right. But, yeah, thanks so much. It was great meeting you guys. I had a blast. I hope you guys did, too. Oh, yeah. Thank it's you. fantastic time. Yeah, this All is right. great. Yeah. All right. See you guys later. Thank you for guys. coming, everyone. Bye. 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 Hmm. This is not mine. You need to get a cookie. This one's mine.